So welcome to the School of Ocean Sciences. My name is Dr Laura Grange and I'm a lecturer in marine biology at Bangor University. And I'd like to take the next 15 minutes or so to talk to you about the School of Ocean Sciences and the unique opportunities that the school can offer you for studying marine biology. I'll also say a little bit about what I do and how the students who study at Bangor within the School of Ocean Sciences can work with me and also get involved with my research. So first of all, why the School of Ocean Sciences? Well, the school is a multidisciplinary marine science department located on the shores of the Menai Strait in North Wales. And it's one of the few true schools of ocean sciences in the country where our research and teaching cover the many disciplines of biology, chemistry, physics and geology of our oceans. We're also one of the largest university marine science departments in Europe, taking around 200 students per year across a wide range of undergraduate programmes. And in addition, we have a long track record in world leading research and also high quality teaching. We also offer a wide range of degree courses across the subject areas of marine biology, including three and four year undergraduate programmes. The course you choose will involve typically 25 to 35 hours per week of lectures, practical sessions, including laboratory and field based work, private study, tutorials and also project work. Recognising the importance of the student experience, the School of Ocean Sciences also offers a wide variety of opportunities for work placements and international experience. And that's beyond the many fieldwork opportunities that arise during our degree programmes. Now these include summer internships, UK based work placements and international experience years, which can be either academic in nature or linked to industry. And these all provide uh, an opportunity to apply the skills that you've learned in an academic setting to a more professional environment. All of our courses can also be entered via a foundation year if you don't have the correct qualifications to enter the first year of undergraduate study. Now we're extremely lucky here within the School of Ocean Sciences and that's owed to our location. So owed to our location, which is on the shores of the Menai Strait, we're perfectly situated for delivering marine science programmes and particularly offering a hands-on experience. And that's because 95% of the Anglesey coastline is a designated area of outstanding natural beauty. And we use these environments to teach key concepts in marine biology and ecology. Many of our students also take full advantage of the landscape by walking, kayaking, climbing and diving in their personal time. In fact, North West Wales is one of the UK's top recreational diving destinations and many ocean sciences students take advantage of this and join the university's Subaqua Club, which has their own boat. Now, there's a strong focus on practical hands on activities in our degree programmes. And as I've said, those include both laboratory based work and also field work. But um, also uh, these activities include seagoing activities. Um, and this is because the school has its own ocean going research vessel, the Prince Maddock. So here at the School of Ocean Sciences, we take great pride in our seagoing heritage and in 2018 celebrated 50 years of seagoing science. Because of this, we engage our students in ship based activities, including fishing trips, where as a student, you would collect fish to work on a future practical sessions, as well as other benthic marine invertebrates. And in addition, um, you participate in multidisciplinary ship-based surveys where you learn about um, the oceanography of the ocean. So in addition, many of our staff have worked on large ocean-going research vessels, in addition, of course, uh, to the Prince Maddox. For example, they've engaged in sampling expeditions that have conducted research on changing sea ice and retreating glaciers in the polar regions, but also uh, research expeditions that have looked at the impact of change on coral reefs in the Pacific and Indian oceans. And ocean going research is just one of the ways that our staff conduct their research. In terms of research, Bangor University is ranked second in the UK for ocean sciences research. And our staff boast a diverse portfolio of research interests from the polar regions to the tropical settings of coral reefs. Students who learn within the school can work with researchers who are at the cutting edge of their research field undertaking laboratory based work, but also field campaigns as part of student research projects, but also placements during the academic year and the summer holidays. So 
So with that in mind, I wanted to say a little bit about the type of research that students who are within the School of Ocean Sciences can get involved in if they were to undertake a research project with me. So as I mentioned, I'm a lecturer in marine biology within the school, but I'm also a marine ecologist. And my primary research interests focus on polar marine ecosystems and particularly the organisms that live at the seafloor. And as you can see from these photographs, I have visited and undertaken research in some of the coldest, driest places on the planet, the Arctic and the Antarctic. And these trips have shown me that the polar regions are amazing places. They're integral to our scientific understanding of how a challenging climate is impacting marine ecosystems. But why do we study the polar regions? The Arctic and Antarctic, after all, are very far away. But both are also considered to be inhospitable places that experience extreme temperatures and seemingly harsh environmental conditions. But for scientists like me, and also early career scientists like you, there are many good reasons why we want to study what's happening at the poles. And this is very much the case for us as ocean scientists. So to put my research into a broader context for you, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, some of the reasons why we study the polar regions, why those polar regions are indeed important. You can think of the polar regions as the cornerstones of our remarkable global ecosystem. They're really the health barometers of our planet. They provide us with an early warning system against the greatest challenge of our time, which is climate change. They also provide us with invaluable information regarding global processes, because the processes that occur in the Arctic and the Antarctic are intimately connected to the processes that occur around the rest of the world. So what happens in the Arctic and the Antarctic influences the living conditions much further away, much closer to home, in fact. They're also regulators and drivers of the world's climate. So much of the weather that we experience here in Europe, within the UK, comes from the Arctic. And our climate models also show us that in the future, the polar regions are predicted to warm much faster than anywhere else on the planet. These are literally hotspots of future climate evolution. And we're already seeing change at the polar regions that can be related to environmental change. We're seeing the melting of glaciers. We're also observing the spectacular breakup of large ice shelves, but also the dramatic retreat of sea ice and a decrease in the duration of the sea ice season. So the polar regions offer an unparalleled natural laboratory for investigating fundamental questions in marine biology and ecology, especially with regards to environmental change and the impacts of climate warming. And these are the questions that I'm interested in trying to answer as part of my research. And my research is principally focused here in the Antarctic. Now, the Antarctic is the last great wilderness on Earth. It's colder, windier and more remote than anywhere else on the planet. This is a formidable landscape, and this landscape covers an area twice the size of Europe, and 99% of that landscape, that land, is covered in ice and snow. So the Antarctic can be thought of as a frozen continent surrounded by ocean, and it's the oceanographic isolation of that continent that creates what is a very modified and unique landscape, but also a unique marine environment. And that environment is characterised by a background of low stable temperatures, typically around zero degrees C, but also a very seasonal and, if you like, limited supply of food, principally to the winter months. And that's particularly the case for marine organisms. So I study those organisms. I study marine creatures that live at the seafloor at the Southern Ocean. And these comprise the vast majority of the biodiversity that is known around Antarctica. Most of the organisms that you can see have evolved in the Southern Ocean over millennial timescales. So they include these giant isopods, which are similar to the wood lice that you see in your gardens, and the sea slater that we see on our shorelines, including sea spiders, some of which are in excess of 30 centimetres in size in terms of their leg span, so their dinner plate size, but also meter long ribbon worms, nemertian worms. There's also large numbers of other species, including marine snails, sea stars, brittle stars, sea cucumbers, other marine worms, sea anemones, and also species of fish. What's unique about these organisms is that they live within a very small temperature window. So they're adapted to a very narrow range of temperature, as I've said, typically around zero degrees C. But given these extreme conditions, how does life exist in the frozen deep south? 
It's actually the slower pace of life and the low metabolic rates, those slow physiological processes that makes Antarctic organisms extremely successful in what is a very uh, harsh or seemingly harsh environment. And these unique fauna have evolved a diversity of weird and wonderful adaptations to survive and thrive there. So these adaptations include antifreeze proteins in fish, so these proteins exist within the blood of Antarctic fish and they bind to ice crystals that form and prevent them from growing and bursting cells. We also see weird and wonderful creatures that display what's referred to as polar gigantism, in other words, where they attain very large body sizes compared to their tropical and their temperate counterparts, the reasons for which we actually don't know yet. So again, more interesting questions that we need to answer about these weird and wonderful creatures. So with that, why do we care? Why is the Antarctic an interesting and an important marine system to study? Well, this figure shows you long-term changes in yearly surface temperature in and around Antarctica. And what it confirms is that the Antarctic, and in particular, the West Antarctic Peninsula, is currently undergoing a period of rapid climate warming. And that temperature change is having an important impact upon that frozen continent, but also the marine organisms that occupy the oceans around it. Now, Antarctic organisms are extremely vulnerable to climate warming, and that's because of their strict physiological limits, because they live within that very narrow temperature window and those slow physiological rates. So they have a limited uh, intrinsic physiological flexibility to cope with that change. So the responses that we observe in these organisms to change are expected to be both sooner and larger uh, compared to their comparable temperate and tropical counterparts. And that's why this is such an interesting system to study. But what does the future hold for these charismatic organisms? Well, this is just one of the questions students at Bangor are working on with me through their student projects, but also through internships to answer. And hopefully maybe some of you will join me in that, in that initiative, in that quest. So hopefully that gives you some insight into what I do but what do Bangor Ocean Sciences students go on to do once they've graduated from the university? So our graduates work across the globe studying marine systems and organisms from sharks to dolphins to penguins. They've received accolades for their achievements and they've been recognised for the contributions they have made to raising awareness around the conservation of threatened species and also for advancing science in their respective research fields. For example, Alison Towner is a former graduate of the Bachelor of Science Marine Biology programme. She works in South Africa on shark, dolphin and penguin conservation. And she, she also recently starred in a Channel 4 documentary work on the wild side. You may have also seen Jack Davies, also a former graduate of the school, on a recent BBC programme, Shark Challenge. He was one of our students who took a placement year as part of his degree programme and it was following that placement with Natural Resources Wales that he was able to secure that really exciting opportunity. So I hope you've enjoyed learning about the school and learning a little bit about what I do and the research that I undertake. So now there's an opportunity for questions. So I hope the next time that we meet, the next time that we're talking, it might be within the School of Ocean Sciences. So thank you very much for listening uh, and any questions.